In this video, we're going to look at advanced mechanism explorer techniques. Now, if you need to know how to use the basics, please go back and watch the intro to mechanism explorer video. So as before, we need to make sure we grab our double-headed arrow. This is a bromohydrin reaction, Br2 in water reacting with a double bond. Now, there's a little difference whenever you involve regiochemistry. So if we take this reaction, the first step is the double bond goes out and attacks the bromine. Now, notice this dotted line is going from this carbon all the way to the bromine. Now, we can click it again, and it'll go from this carbon to the bromine. So when you start at a double bond, you can go from either of the two carbons of the double bond, and you can click through those. So the first click, the dotted line extends all the way out to this carbon, to this CH2. So that would mean that we would be drawing a line from this carbon to the Br as part of this mechanistic step. If we click it again, it's coming from this internal carbon of the double bond to there. Now, if you click it a third time, it extends out. This will not work on these mechanisms. So if you do that, you're going to get an ambiguous message because you're not showing the regiochemistry. You're going out from the center of the bond, and you're not saying, is it here or here? So if we continue this mechanism by grabbing here, and the next step of the mechanism would have the lone pair on this bromine attacking the other carbon. So if we had drawn it from the CH2 to the bromine, then we would have the lone pair on the bromine attacking the other carbon. And then we need to show the carbon bro uh, the bromine bromine bond breaking to release a free bromine. When you apply that, you're going to get this message. Ambiguous scenario. Don't know which source of atoms the bond to leave the new bond attached to. Which source of atoms of the bond. What that means is when you draw your arrow, you need to show that regiochemistry with the dotted line. So don't click all the way through to the third one. So see, I'm drawing this out. This dotted line, if you follow it, goes all the way back to this carbon. That's what we want. You could do it with this one. That's fine also. You would just then have to bring your lone pair back to here. But do not use this one. So we're going to use the first one where it clicks all the way from this CH2 to here. Then we'll take it back to that carbon there. So now we're taking it back to that carbon. So this first arrow is connecting this CH2 to here. The second arrow is this lone pair to here, making a three-membered cyclo uh, propane like ring, but with a bromonium ion in it. And then we break off our bromine. And now we get the correct mechanism. Now we would just continue on. The next step of the mechanism would be the bromonium ion would be attacked by the oxygen nucleophile. Here we're not starting at a bond. So when you click the arrow, there's only two things it goes through. It goes through showing you from lone pair through that dotted line to the more substituted carbon. And then when you click it again, it just extends it out. But that's okay because you don't have to worry about there. When you're originating at an atom with a lone pair, at the lone pair of the atom, you can extend it out. But when you're originating in the bond and you have to show regiochemistry, you cannot extend it out. So we attack the correct, more substituted carbon, and then our last step is just to, oops, always remember, which I forgot, to grab your lone pair, uh, your electron flow arrows and then grab the lone pair. Once again, I can extend that out. That's not a problem because I'm not originating at a bond. So here's another example with an alkene addition. So once again, we grab the double-headed arrow. We originate at a bond, and we go out and attack. Now, in this case, there are, once again, two dotted lines, but we can't use either of them. With the bromonium reaction before, you know, one part of our double bond was attacking the bromine, the bromine was attacking the other part of the double bond. So you could have made either part of the double bond attack the bromine. That's just how the mechanism works. But in this mechanism, the dotted line as drawn now is connecting this internal carbon to the H, which would put a primary carbocation, which is very bad. So if we click a second time, now we have the dotted line going from the CH2 to the H, forming a secondary carbocation, which is good. 
Don't extend it out because if you extend it out like that, you're going to get that notification that you've drawn an ambiguous arrow and you're going to have to start over. So what you want to do, start at the double bond, draw it out. Now that you've drawn it, one that's one version, but that's not the one you want. You click again and now it's coming from here. Whenever you start at a double bond, either of those two carbons could be the one that connects to the H. We want it to be this one, so we form a more substituted carbocation. And then we would just finish off the mechanism. So all sorts of advanced mechanisms. Once again, we're starting at an atom. When you start at the lone pair of an atom, you can extend out the arrow. All sorts of advanced mechanisms are available. We just saw a bromo, um, bromination followed by a water attack, a um, halo, halo hydrohalogen uh, halogen uh, bromohydrin reaction sorry about that um, and then we saw an alkene addition you can also see things like here we have a six step imine reaction so the first step is for the lone pair on the nitrogen to attack the double bond O turn the double bond O to an O minus in a nucleophilic attack on the electrophilic carbon of the carbonyl and then you would just continue on through we have a series of proton transfers that come following that so the conjugate base of sulfuric acid acting as the base will deprotonate this proton pull this proton off of the nitrogen and you get a series of acid base reactions occurring after that uh, one more example, so here's an example. I'm going to zoom in so we can see more of it. In this particular example, our base being this ethoxide attacking this hydrogen. It's originated in an atom, so we can click this. Now, the best way to draw this, the best resonance form of the resulting um, product with the deprotonation product is going to be the enolate. So the base, the ethoxide, attacks the proton, forms a double bond, double bond turns into an O to make the O minus, the enolate form of that. But the carbanion form is a proper form. So that was voted, you know, that was graded correct, not voted correct. Sorry about that. Um, but let's do this reaction again. Now, we're going to do it where the lone pair, and if you have trouble getting the lone pair, remember you can click it and then touch the lone pair. It makes it a lot easier. Lone pair comes out, grabs that carbon, that hydrogen, sorry, and then the bond breaks, sending the electron to the carbon, forming a carbanion. That will be okay. Um, that'll be graded fine, but then the next picture when it's loaded will be loaded in the enolate form because that's the better form of that. So see, it's graded correct. It's showing the carbanion here. There's the carbanion. But now we have the enolate. And as you continue this mechanism, you would have regiochemistry on the next step. So the lone pair on the oxygen would form a double bond. And then this double bond would have to come out and attack here. But you need to show that it's this carbon of the double bond, not that carbon of the double bond that's attacking. If we click again, we can see the dotted line moving there, and then the ambiguous one, which we don't want. We want that first one where it, when we, the O minus forms a double bond to reform into the carbonyl, this double bond goes out and attacks, and it's a bond that's forming between here and here to form a five-membered ring, not a bond from here to here, which there is no electron density to do that, but that would form a six-membered ring. Also, don't try and do too many steps. Don't try and reform the double bond, kick off that. You've got to proceed stepwise, one step at a time. So that will be then be graded correct, and then you would continue on. So these are some techniques to use with more advanced Mechanism Explorer um, problems. Make sure you watch the intro to Mechanism Explorer so you can see the more simplistic Mechanism Explorer problems. Thank you very much.